I'd like to welcome everybody out there um, on this Zoom webinar, uh, which is a conversation between Marlon Davila and Tim Andrews. Um, I'm Jim Levine. I'm the Interim Executive Director of the Arts Council. Before we get going with um, this webinar, I just wanted to give uh, thanks mm -hmm. to the staff of the Arts Council, who for the past five or six weeks has been working really hard to put together programs that we call Apart Together, which have attempted to connect the community through art, even though we can't be together. So we've had a variety of activities. If you're interested, I'd encourage you to visit our website, check them out, get involved. Um, but it's really been the staff that's been pushing and making that possible uh, for the past five or six weeks. We've also started a mask making project which to date has made over 600 masks and we're distributing them uh, really all throughout Princeton. So even in the midst That's of right. a, a pandemic, we've been pretty busy. Um, so this is our first um, conversation, uh, hopefully one of many. And for anybody who's out there, if you have ideas for us or thoughts about the format, um, you can send an email to info at arts council of Princeton.org or put it in the chat. It's just an opportunity for us to get better. All right, with that, I'm gonna introduce uh, Tim Andrews and Marlon Davila. Tim is a former board president of the Arts Council of Princeton. He is an arts lover and he actually came to us with this idea to have this conversation so that people could listen in and learn a little bit more about the artist community. Uh, Marlon Davila was the artist in residence, the Ann Reeves artist in residence at the Arts Council of Princeton in the past year um, when he completed a mural project at the corner of Lee and John in the Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood. And I know that Tim is going to be talking with Marlon about that mural, but also about lots of other things about his path to getting where he is today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim. I'm going to uh, stop my video so you can just see Tim and Marlon. And if you have thoughts or comments, put them in the chat, and I'll be monitoring that so that we can address any questions or concerns that you might have. All right, I'm turning it over to you, Tim. Great. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, really appreciate the introduction. Uh, and Marlon, this has been uh, months in the making. I'm really excited to be able to sit down. When we first started talking about uh, an artist in residence uh, and your name came up, I said, my only requirement is that I want to have dinner with him. Uh, and we haven't been able to get together yet. So, so I decided when we were actually arranging and I thought it's a little selfish to do this just by myself. Why not do it uh, in this environment, you know, so that, so that everyone can sort of, you know, listen in on us and ask questions yourself. And so again, you know, if you want to ask questions, certainly submit questions all along the conversation if you're listening in tonight. And I'll try to take those questions sort of in real time and, and pose them to Marlon and we'll also do Q and A at the end. Um, so Marlon, let's get started. You know, you were, you were born and raised uh, in Princeton uh, of, of Guatemalan uh, parents. Uh, talk to us a bit about, you know, growing up uh, in Princeton, you know, where you grew up and, and what your early memories are and, and just, you know, tell us how that, how that was and, and what life was back, you know, uh, what, 25 years ago or so when you were born, right? <laughs> That's so funny, I'm 46. Okay, great. <laughs> 46 years ago, Marlon. Um, so um, I was born in Princeton and, and uh, first generation. And uh, my mother um, was only 19 years old. And she was really homesick. Um, my aunt lived in Princeton. And, you know, when the whole story with my mother, uh, it, it's a big deal. You know, she... She was pregnant. Um, my grandmother was not happy about the whole situation. Um, my father, my biological father, who I do not know, um, was not a very good guy. In fact, he was already married. So there needed to leave the country. And my aunt who lived in Princeton um, sent money for my mother to come over and for her to have a better life. Um, so I was born here, we lived here for a couple years and she just was too homesick. 
So we went back and I lived in Guatemala. I started school in Guatemala. So my first language was Spanish. Um, my mother remarried. Um, and when I was eight years old, we came back to the States. So when I started school at Community Park School in Princeton, mm. um, it was everything was so brand new to me. I didn't know the language. There was no ESL programs back then. So it was rough. It was rough. So, so before you came to the States from Guatemala in that, those six years, do you remember an introduction to art in Guatemala? Uh, you know, what was, what, was, what was life like in those years to the extent that you can sort of remember, you know, now 40 years later, what was that like? What I can tell you about um, with, with me as a little kid, I always had this love for fashion. Um, I remember I used to always uh, get my mother to get me, every year she would get me cowboy boots, right? And I, uh, <laughs> and I got her to get me these burgundy cowboy boots. And they had, you know, the, the little things on the side where you pull, so you can pull up the boot. Yeah, yeah, well, the straps, yeah. I had the, I had the bright idea to put tassels <laughs> <laughs> and my mother was like whoa i'm like mom i love them they flare when i walk and this um, is in guatemala this is in guatemala this is in guatemala <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> so um and then you know my grandmother had 10 daughters and one son he um my uncle is my age so my mother and my my grandmother were pregnant at the same time. But anyhow, growing up with a whole bunch of aunts that were dating, they were teenagers dating, they would, you know, try to try clothes on and they would ask me for suggestions <laughs> of what to put together. So I knew about color back then. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I knew how to put ensembles together where they look great. Um, little kid, seven years old. Um, but... I didn't realize I loved art until community park. Okay, so then you came to the States and did you live with your aunt, you know, the, when you came to the States or where did, yes, your, we, where did you and your mom live? We, uh, we stayed with her for a little bit till my parents found an apartment in Princeton mm -hmm. and uh, we lived on Witherspoon, right um, next door to Conti's. Okay. There's, a, there's apartments there. We yeah. lived on the second floor. And we loved it because my brother and I would go to the swimming pool every every day for the summers. That's awesome. And you were right at school too. You're a great, a oh, great yeah. location for it was school. Right there. So then you went to school. You didn't. You spoke Spanish and and no English at all, or just very little English, I guess you said. No English at all. So it was all fresh to me. It was all brand new. Hard to imagine. I mean, how how did you? learn English in school and, and did your, did your aunt who'd lived here uh, speak English and, and sort of help or, you know, what was, what was your recollections of that? They absolutely helped. My aunt was wonderful. In fact, she, you know, she holds a, a very dear place in my heart because, mm -hmm. you know, she was just amazing to us. Um, she helped us around with like, you know, the medical, like finding doctors, because we didn't know. Um, right. But anyhow, yeah, it was it was a difficult situation to um, adjust to as a kid, especially because you know I think that you know when you start in kindergarten, you you know, and then you go first grade, second grade, you already have a kindling, you know, with your with your, the kids. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone, so from the get go, it was tough. I felt, felt like a little alienated. Mm -hmm. Were there other Guatemalan children in, in school? Like, were there, were there other people from no, Guatemala at that time? Not so, much. Maybe one, maybe one other family that I know, uh, one or two families that I knew of. And we weren't all together because some of them lived at the uh, village or the Reading Circle. Yeah. So they would go to the different uh, public schools. Mm -hmm. So so you're in community uh, school, uh, community park school. And, and what's your first memory of getting into art? Was that, you know, was that at first or second grade or sort of what's your first memory so, of that? So my first uh, memory was that, you know, with art, I didn't have to worry about the language. Mm -hmm. With art, it was just me and the paper or the project. And I was able to be free with, you know, I guess, and you know what other class I love? Music class. 
Yeah. Music class was great because, you know, we did dance, we did theater, a little bit of theater. So the classes where English was involved <laughs> were my favorites. And so how did you sort of fall into to art? What kind of art were you, you know, were you doing typical kids art or were you still in the fashion uh, world, you know, and trying to, you know, redecorate your, your, your teacher's <laughs> outfit or what were you doing? Oh my God. So, you know, it was just, you know, okay. So being foreign, well, you know, you know, being a new kid in, in, in Princeton, um, and then, you know, I knew I was a little different, you know, cause I like Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> I like fashion, you know, it was not, I wasn't your typical boy. I just wasn't, you know, I like to go out, but for the most part, I would choose to stay in my bedroom and color, color mm -hmm. books or draw doodle, just doodle, 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 doodle. And I'm, I don't know why, but I just love to doodle. So that's sort of through elementary school. And then when did you sort of say, gosh, maybe I'm an artist, you know, when did you, when did you sort of say this isn't coloring and maybe oh this is God. something more and, and was it in elementary school or, or junior so high? The whole, or? the whole thing is that, you know, I always remember having that whole fashion thing. And I really love the fashion. I love style. I always, um, I don't know. I somehow or another, it got my mother to buy, I was into clothes, like the 80s. There was so much fashion going on in the 80s. So I just loved the, like, the punk stuff. I loved, loved the skateboarders, uh, rap, definitely. Um, so I had style. Um, <laughs> and I just wanted to go with the whole fashion thing. That's what I wanted. To, that was my passion, fashion. So um, I didn't know I was going to be an artist. I really did not know. I just knew that I knew how to design. So I started designing clothes and I started putting like, you know, little pieces here together, the dresses, the skirts. And, and so then high school, what was going on in high school? Is that when you got into more formal, um, you know, uh, art, you know, classes and, and discussing and oh saying, taking God. more seriously? So the funniest thing about this whole thing is that I always threw art to the side. I never thought I, in a million years. Um, I did take a semester in high school, but I thought it was corny. I thought it was like, I don't know. I just thought I was, I, I was weird, I think. I thought that, you know, being in the art class was going to qualify me as being a nerdy type, and I didn't want to be a nerd. I wanted hmm. to be the fashion kid. So what were you taking in instead, if you weren't taking art classes, and that wasn't your, your, maybe it was your passion, but it was sort of a bit of a hidden passion, what kind of classes were you taking, you know, in high school? Your general classes. I, I honestly, I was a little bit of a bad kid. Okay. I, I was a little, I, I, I didn't uh, put too much effort into my schooling. Um, in fact, I think it had to do with uh, the, uh, my parents divorced when I was 13. So my mother was struggling a lot with the bills. And as soon as I turned 14, I started working. So I was exhausted yeah. most of the time because after school, I would go to work. So I worked at of, the eating clubs. Where, where at? At the eating clubs at the university. Really? So I was bus, yeah, I was a bus boy, waiting tables as well at the eating clubs. And how long did you do that? Was it all through high school? Yeah. And, you know, you know, I didn't grow up in Princeton. I've lived in Princeton for 20 years. I didn't grow up in Princeton. But sort of what was, what was it like growing up in Princeton as a Guatemalan kid with a mother who is divorced? You know, English is not your first language, but you obviously, you know, learned it quite quickly through, through elementary school, I'm sure. Um, and, 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 and at some point in there, maybe you hadn't realized you were gay yet or, or whatever. But sort right. of what, what was growing up in Princeton like then? Were people kind to you? Like what was the, what was the neighborhood like? And sort of what was the rhythm of, of Princeton in, in, those, in, in those couple of decades that you were, you were you know, in elementary school and high school in Princeton? Um, it was, you know, I really wasn't too, you know, through middle school, I didn't have many friends. In high school, I started having friends. I, I definitely said to myself, I need to come out of my shell. So I started um, befriending a lot of the kids that were coming from uh, Guatemala, Mexico. Um, okay. I started befriending them and kind of like showing them the ropes. So you're like a mentor, se. like sort of a mentor to some of them. 
you know, it it automatically fell fell that route. It wasn't intentional, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. And so you're you're in high school. You know, it's 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 you're sort of getting close to the end of high school. Um, what were you thinking about what you wanted to do for your career, and and sort of how did that unfold over the course of your you know sort of late teens? I was such a materialist that um, as soon as I uh, because I was working and I was able to save some money. Mm -hmm. um, so when I I was 17, I, I had enough money to buy you know or enough of a down for a down payment for a car. So I purchased the car. Okay. And little did I know at that age that um, the the car insurance was going to be sky high because my mom <laughs> was not going to pay for it. So um, right after high school, unfortunately, I wanted to go to at least Mercer County uh, Community College, but mm -hmm. I was paying for my car. And what were you doing to pay for your car? I was working two jobs. Okay. And not in art. I'm guessing not in art. Art was not in, in at all in the pictures. Okay. Fast forward to yeah. if if I can tell you when art came along. Yeah, yeah. Or, do you want me, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. That's great. That was my next question. So, so so sort of when did art come into your life and and sort of what happened? Yeah. So um. I I moved. You know, as soon as I saved enough more money, I paid I paid that car. I saved enough money to uh, move out of state. I wanted to move out of state. I moved to Florida. And I went to the uh, Art Institute for Lauderdale okay. for fashion design. I, mm -hmm. I went to school there for a year and a half and it got too expensive. I couldn't continue it. Um, never happened, moved back to New Jersey, started working at Princeton University. Okay. There, they have a great program for employees who wanna go back to school. Um, they reimburse you 80% of That's your- That's great. So I took advantage of that. I went for graphic design at Mercer County. Mm -hmm. So with graphic design, you have to take some art classes. Um, it was a uh, life drawing class. And the professor suggested that I take an, a painting class. And I'm like, no, I'm not taking a painting class. I, it's not part of my curriculum. He was like, you love it. I promise you. <laughs> oh, no. And then um, I took his, you know, his advice uh, and I fell completely in love with painting so much that I, I changed my majors and I graduated with honors and with fine arts and now here I am. That is awesome. So, so after you got your degree, what, you know, sort of how did your career begin? What, what was that journey, you know, to use a, a word from your artwork, which we're going to get into a couple of minutes. So what was that journey leading you from, from you know, that age to sort of where we are, you know, let's, let's sort of getting back to sort of, you know, 19 when you started 2019 uh, when, when you started working on that on the, on the piece last year so sort of what was that journey like um for your career oh my god life-changing the the mural you mean the mural no i mean i mean uh, so you graduated from college and sort of how did you then start looking for you know so opportunities to sort of practice your, your art yeah Got you. So um, it was all about networking. And, you know, I, I got to say networking is um, the toughest part as an artist uh, to do because um, you want to you want to be able to get accepted somewhere and you, you want someone to open the doors to you and um, let alone like exhibiting a piece for the first couple of years was just so rough because it's almost like you're, um, I don't feel that I've always, uh, I'm better at uh, communicating with my art versus me verbally speaking. Okay. Um, so when I would show an art, an art, I would go crazy with my nerves. Um, I would lose sleep because it's just so intimidating and showing, but I started little by little um, in New York City, um, in Asbury Park, um, in um, at, at the Arts Council, of course, and uh, in Provincetown, mm -hmm. in Provincetown, um, New York City, a couple of times. So yeah, no, it's it's been great, but it's all been you know like me searching uh, openings for artists, you know, all art events. I just you know just dabble you know here and there to try to you know 
get the experience. Mm -hmm. And what's your favorite type of medium? Like what's, you know, what do you, you know, you, you, you know, what do you, what do you prefer to sort of work in? Um, oh my God. So I used to think that, well, I'm definitely going to say people are my favorite subject to paint, but like all the again, people, like all the, like all the people behind you, I think you've got <laughs> some great pieces on the wall behind you. <laughs> yes. Um, but I have to say that landscapes and animals are also in fantasy. I'm, I'm a surrealist. I'm, I'm finding out that I, I, I'm going in that venue because in that route, because I don't know, it just, I feel that, you know, as I'm growing, I'm also uh, growing spiritually because art allows me to stay connected to who I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's almost like I hypnotize myself when I'm like for hours just painting and painting and just, you know, it's almost like the relationship between my soul and the canvas and the, the brushes and the, and the paint and something just evolves, but it's not just people, it's also landscapes. Um, like, you know, the mural, it, oh my God, I, I, you know, I was, I was like, you know what, I love painting people. And I hope that once I get to, to paint the mural that I'm able to, you know, do what I do, but I, you know, it just came naturally, the flow. I think it's when, you know, I search from within and something just magically happens. That's awesome. And, and how do you select the, like, for instance, the paintings on the wall behind you, how do you select the people you're painting? Are they friends? Are they people you're imagining? Are they sort of what, you know, who are you painting? And, and then we're going to get to the, to the, to the mural and how you sort of thought about that. But, but the ones behind you are beautiful. So how did you sort of, how do you, how do you approach that? As somebody who's not an artist and just loves art, I'm always interested in sort of people, how people sort of select the subjects they're going to be painting or, or creating. Um, so it's it's pretty much um either um so the the number one way is people i know mm -hmm. people i know or people that uh fascinate me i'm I, I get fascinated by people uh so much um that when when i just see i think i love people that are genuine mm -hmm. and just free-spirited and when i see that beauty it just inspires me and then I go and I'm like, okay, I like her. She's beautiful. It's just, you know, she's so secure about herself. She's showing that, you know, she has a glow to herself. And so then I go and I, and I start painting it. Once she's done, then something, I see something else and then boom, you know, like it, it just, it's, it's an evolvement. It just evolves into like something that is really not planned per se. I do plan but not all the time. Most of the time, it just happens as I'm painting. Like and the one behind me. Yeah, the which, one you, right here behind which, one, me. which one do you want to show us? Which one are you pointing at? This one right here. Yeah. Um, she is a, um, a fashion model in Spain. And she's very uh, extravagant with her clothing. And she's, she her name is Sita. Mm. And I just love how she's like, uh, the glasses, the boots, the hair. Um, so then she's very fantasy. So then I paint, I painted her and then I was like, okay, you know what? It looks like she, she could be in a, in an underworld world with like a full of mermaids. And I just started adding mermaids and now she's <laughs> all of a sudden in deep water with a whole bunch of mermaids. That's just how it happens. That is awesome. Well, so I'm, I'm so excited about about the work that you did for Princeton in the this this artist in residence uh, program. Um, you know, I know that the I know when the work sort of started, but you know, when were you first approached? How did you get involved with the Arts Council on this project? I know you certainly have had your work displayed at the Arts Council previously, but you know, uh, how did you sort of first get involved in potentially being part of this big this big uh, mural program? Um. I was approached to see if I was uh, interested in in a project in, in this project, and um, I and was I, that was that Maria was that Maria Evans? I, uh, I was approached by Maria Evans and yeah. the team, and um, they wanted to see if I was interested in, in uh, working with them. And uh, you know, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this is like a, a dream come true for me. Uh, absolutely, I was on board a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, Maria is great, and for for those who don't know, she's the artistic director of of the of Princeton uh, for the Arts Council of Princeton. She's just awesome. So um, she's got a great eye. 
she's got a great eye in, in, in identifying you. So, so did you scout out where this was going to be? Uh, you know, did, did Maria sort of say, hey, we're thinking about this area or sort of how did you sort of come upon that space or was that a collaborative activity or sort of how did that occur? The space was already, was already, um, I think, selected. Okay. Um, but the interesting thing about it is that everything was, it was like a synchronicity of sorts. Um, I lived on John Street for uh, many, many years. Um, oh. I lived on the last house of John Street, which is the closest to Community Park and the tennis courts. Yeah. I lived there for many years. So, that so this is like was, five blocks away from your from where you grew up or something then? It's like a, a, a two blocks. Two blocks, wow. Two blocks. Yeah. Um, so it was a path that I always went by, you know, it was my neighborhood, it was mm -hmm. my neighborhood for years. So uh, to me, <clears throat> it was just a dream come true. And I got to be honest with you, um, as excited as I was, I also was like, wow, I'm jumping on this, um, you know, project that, you know, could really make or break me, um, you know, but the overall feeling was just so much excitement. And when I, the minute I got there, everything was just so natural, everything just, and the people were just so amazingly supportive and everybody that passed by would just want to take pictures and talk to me and talk about the process. It was overall, it was a bit, you know, I, I miss it. I, I, I'm serious. I miss it. And so how did you conceive the work? You know, you, you, so you saw the space and, and sort of how did you think about what am I going to, what am I going to, what am I going to put on this blank canvas for, for those of us who are not artists, you know, it's just always an amazing thing to think, you know, how does an artist sort of start conceiving what this is going to be and look like and what are the layers going to be? And, you know, so, so, so talk to us about that process of, of envisioning what you're going to put on that, on that, in that space. So Maria and I, we had um, this whole vision of putting up a tree. A tree and a tree um, there's so much symbolism to a tree um, I mean uh, from a tree we can get so many uh, positive things for us as humans I mean trees uh, from trees you can get fruit from trees you can get flowers that bloom um, that smell um, oxygen it, it, it's just life it's a representational of life and then you know um and that just came about and then you know butterflies butterflies were i feel like i i you know uh butterflies are a representation of how us humans are wow. because we're, we we bond together hmm. and sometimes we go together and sometimes we don't like I needed to get out of Princeton when I was a kid and, you know, go explore somewhere else. And that's what butterflies do. They fly and they explore. I went back to Florida, I came back home to Princeton. I mean, that's how it all evolved. And, you know, um, it, you know, it's about the mural is about um, transformation because as humans, as you know, boy, little did I know that kid that was in high school that thought art was corny mm. is now a full-time artist. That's awesome. And so, so the, the, let's, let's, I think we should, let's, a couple of questions and we're going to, I'm going to ask Jim to pop up a, a photo of this space before so we can sort of get an eye for this. I mean, I think many people probably have seen the space and went walk by or whatever, but let's just, um, Let's let's pop up a picture of the sort of this is the wall after it's been prepped. So, um, so first of all, how did you get this is a huge space? How did you sort of get your head around this big of a space? Um, you know, in terms of of that, you know, what's what's that? You know, what's that? Uh, what's that seem like? How did you do that? Um, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, it, I had to go look at it face to face a few times. Yeah. I needed to um, get myself, um, it, you know, like uh, the canvas and I, we become one. So I needed to become associated with this wall. So prior to the the day of, you know, I I went out there for a few times and I, you know, looked at the height, felt the wall, 
um, kind of become associate, you know, like I, to get myself comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, of course there was nerves, you know, the day before, but the minute I, I, I tell you, the minute that I got there, I just could not wait to get started and just like get going. It was just, the artist in me just wanted to, you know, take on the challenge. And did you have it? Did you did you draw it out first, and or, or paint it first, or did was this sort of a blank canvas? And you sort of just started. It? And and what we're looking at right here in this photo is this is this prep work you did, or is this the way the wall worked before you did anything? That's the wall before we did anything. Okay. And so you know, sort of how do you how do you get your head around this space, which which is interesting and in spending time with it? But then do you sketch it out, or you know what what's your prep to then walk up to that wall and and put the first paint stroke on it so um what the the arts council team did was uh they they put my painting onto um uh, uh the image that you see right now they photoshopped yeah. it and they put it there uh -huh. so then once you do that you see your eye the perspective changes you know oh, interesting yeah you were able to like somehow um measure with i measure with your eyes and you know you just so once that was there we we took print out and then we just i just started with the chalk and just did the negative space negative space if you look at the negative space you start out like that way you get the the shapes that you want to get i see interesting and so let's go to the next uh, slide so here we are you're in process pretty far along so you you painted the first uh, base coat, I guess, of the blue and the white that's sort of mixed. And sort of, you know, how did that go down? Do you have any help with that? And then uh, talk to us about sort of the process of this layering that's now happening. So the, the background, okay, so let me tell you about the background. The background first got, um, so they, um, the team, they went and they, they put on the background. So they start out with the blue. Mm -hmm. And you see how the blue is um, starts kind of like lightening up as you go down. Yeah. Um, and then once the back background was set in, um, then I came in and I took care of the rest. I see. And did you break the wall down? And we got just got a question. Did you did you break the wall down into grids and then approach it in that sort of way, um, or did you sort of was this a freestyle thing after you did the, you did the drawing in freestyle? When you say breakdown, do you mean like a, um, I think so a grid like, system? Like yeah, like a grid, a grid system, like a grid no system. No grid or system. Just, so it's all freehand, basically. All freehand. Wow. Okay. Okay. So so then you started, you know, doing the drawing. Tell us a little bit. To walk us through that process and sort of what you were thinking that during during all this. And and did you make any mistakes? You know, this is the kind of thing I sort of go, gosh, what happens if a mistake happens? Oh my God, mistakes are, are done every day <laughs> when it comes to art. And that's the thing that, you know, um, as an artist and, I, you know, whoever uh, is an artist and is watching um, must know this, that uh, you cannot be hard on yourself because a mistake from a mistake, you can create something really beautiful. So you just have to, you know, constantly move back from what you're working on and just take a, a, a break and then come back and look at it again and then you might see it if it works or not but mistakes are always a part of the game always and so how long did you know so so you started filling in the tree etc sort of how long did this process take what was the what was the length of the process and how many hours a day did you work on it and we had another question from the audience so sort of how many hours a day did you work on it and and sort of how long did it take to complete it so um it, it you know it all varied on the hours for uh, for the um a normal day for me would be nine to uh three thirty to four nine to four mm -hmm. and how and long then, did um yeah. and then um it took four weeks to, to finalize and during that period, people were walking by and what kind of comments were you getting from people that were walking by? They must have been mystified what was going on, but, but what was the feedback? Can you repeat the question? I lost you. Yeah. How was, you know, as, as you're working on this over the course of that month, what was the, what were people saying as they were walking by? Because that's a fairly active area. So what was the feedback? What kind of questions were you getting, comments and, and things? 
let me tell you, the feedback was so great that it was my fuel. They motivated, like people in the neighborhood that passed by just uh, motivated me and got me to feel even more powerful, I guess. Um, I just felt like um, that, you know, they were there to support me and, and, you know, their support just got me on a bigger high and I was just on a a cloud nine per se. That's awesome. Um, So, so, you know, the the development of this, you know, let's, let's go to the next, let's go to the next uh, picture. This is, I guess we're getting close to wrapping up here, right? In terms of the the mural, how's, how far along are you at this, in this juncture? Is this pretty close to being finished? So right here in this pic- in this picture, um, the tree there's no butterflies. The tree was pretty much you know like 80, 75 percent done. Um, but after this step right here, I was going to start doing the um, adding the butterflies. Okay, great. So let's go to the next picture. I think we've got butterflies. Look beautiful. <laughs> Yes. So this is the finished work, I think. I think at this point it's finished, right? At this point, the the mural is finished. Yeah, and in, in, in this photo, and yes. so this is about a month. So, so you know, this was there was a bit of a journey to get here. You know, that's the name of the piece, but it's also was a bit of a journey. You know, um, th- this project wasn't without a little controversy, um, and and certainly took a little time to get finished. There were a lot of approvals because it's historic district and all those things, sort of. You know, you grew up in the area. You you really wanted to do this piece. You know, how did you sort of handle that that conversation and that sort of debate and that discussion was going on? You know, there were a lot of community meetings to talk about: should there be art or not art? If there should be art, who should do the art? Sort of, how was that? You know, as a as a um, you know as an artist, just wanting to put your work out there. What was that process like? And and sort of tell us a little bit about that. Um, The process was such a learning experience. Um, From beginning to end, it was almost as if, you know, I was uh, walking on um, eggshells because um, there was people that were not for the mural. So these people that uh, were not in support of the mural, they um, were their their opinions of the the project were not really um, positive, and I have to be honest with you. Thankfully, you know I don't know if it's that I developed a thick skin, um, but I kind of handle it in a in a in a great way because positive way because you know what not everybody's gonna love my art. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. And people have the right to have their own opinions. Um, But to any other artists that are listening um, and, you know, are starting out, I suggest that um, they start practicing not taking things, opinions of other people uh, personal, because there's going to be people that are not going to be in your favor or like your art or support you. And you have to be open-minded about it and kind of ground yourself. And, you know, uh, meditation really helped me, I think. So, mm-hmm. Well, it finally got approved. And I, I think that the, the debate was probably a healthy one in the end. Do you think it was that it was that it made the work better or different, this debate that went on, you know, or do you think it, it didn't really 100%. change? And, and 100%. It's... It made me want to do, and even, that's just the person that I am. Any Any project that I take on, it has to be uh, almost perfect because I, you know, I'm passionate about this is, this is what I really love doing. So I just wanted to show these people that, you know, this mural, uh, if anything, was going to be something positive for the neighborhood. And if anything, you know, it's, I think it brought people together and, you know, you're able to pass by and it's, you know, it's something wonderful to see, I think, you know, it's very it friendly and inviting. Day. It's very inviting and friendly and brightens up the entire area. Do you think? Do you think it was? It was even more difficult because this is your neighborhood. This is almost like you're being, 
you know, questioned and, and maybe not rejected, but you're being, you know, you know, not maybe accepted your work, you know, in the neighborhood. Did that make it more difficult, you think? Um, I don't know if it if it uh, had to do that this was my neighborhood or maybe it was. I never thought about that. Um, but, I, you know, I, I still know a lot, a lot of people, even though I don't live in Princeton, um, a lot of people in Princeton know me and I know them and they know of my mother and, you know, my mother's, you know, I, I visit my mother weekly. So I'm in Princeton all the time. Um, I think the majority of people supported mm -hmm. this, so, this project. So we've got a couple of additional questions from the audience. And again, you know, certainly put your questions out there. Uh, one question is what does the white circle signify? Lights, stars? Yes, stars. Okay, great. And um, you were, as someone says, you were so open to passers by and let the children and emerging artists help you. Um, you were encouraging as a mentor. So this gets back to that mentorship that maybe you had as a, as a kid helping other, other children, you know, uh, get more comfortable in school and with new language. So is that something you, you're doing now? Are you doing any teaching? Um, I do. Uh, I did the summer camp last year at the Arts Council. And um, I was also supposed to have a class this uh, spring but you know, with this whole epidemic, it uh, never happened, but I'm still, you know, hopeful that we can somehow maybe work for the um, summer or the fall, hopefully, um, where I would be teaching kids how to paint. And kids are definitely um, a passion of mine because I feel that, you know, I kind of needed it as a kid. So I, you know, especially, you know, first generation, um, and I want to be kind of like, you know, a, a role model for these kids that, you know, maybe don't know, or don't get, you know, the right, put in the right direction. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I have to say this last photo, I just loved it. I think it appeared in uh, the town topics and, and uh, mm -hmm. or at least one similar to it appeared in the town topics. And I love this photo with all the kids pointing at different parts of the, of the work. That must have been really exciting to see. So, so engaged, you know, children so engaged in your work in, a, in such a public place. It was just a blank wall before. Yeah, I mean, that day was just fantastic because the kids were so excited. And as you can see in that picture, I were actually counting the leaves, <laughs> trying to get their attention. So let's count the leaves. Let's see how many leaves the trees has. And so they're all pointing. And then somebody must have taken a picture, but it's a great picture. I love it. That is great. So um, any other murals in your future? Uh, you know, this was, I think this was your first mural, right? Was this your first larger scale piece of uh, work? Yes. Um, this, the journey mural was my first uh, mural ever. <laughs> Um, but yes, I, um, I am working um, on a couple other projects. Um, one of them is uh, in Bordentown, mm. and it's with uh, the DNR Greenway project. Yeah, great. So um, I'll be painting with the Futuro program kids um, out there on a um, container, a shipping well, container. Oh, wow, that's cool. And where's the it's, shipping container going to be located? It's right, right on the park uh, facing the water. So that huh? container is going to uh, hold uh, canoes. Oh, that's going to be so cool. It's going to be fantastic. I'm really excited about it. You know, we should mention here that Lupita's Grocery is the, um, were so supportive during this entire thing and volunteered their walls. So they were awesome. Do you want to say a couple words about that, Marlon? I mean, I think they were just, yes. just they were, they were wanna, supportive from the very beginning. It was just I awesome. I want to thank. Lupita, Lupita grocery store for being so supportive and kind to me. Um, they always offered me water from time to time. Uh, they would bring me lunch. I mean, they were so great and, you know, um, so appreciative of, of this whole mural going on their store, you know, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful to Lupita's grocery store. That's great. Um, so where else can we see your work besides uh, at this great location in John Street and Lee and, and Lee Avenue? Where else can we see your work? We've gotten a few questions from people saying they want to see more, more, more. So Marlon, where can they see more? 
Um, go to my webpage, which is lovechild.com. So, lovechild.com. Um, so it's uh, a flip around L, so it looks like a seven. Um, so it's pretty much a seven, seven O V E child.com. Um, and there you can see, um, my, my paintings, a collection of my paintings. And, um, there I have, uh, ink drawings, um, my shop and I want to give away, um, three of my ink prints. Yes, that's very exciting. Do you want to show this? So we, we have three, Marlon is, as, has, uh, generously donated the Arts Council three of his ink prints. Um, they're going to be given away this evening. And one is going to be given to a lucky person who asks a question. So we're going to look at all the people that ask questions, and we're going to give them one. So if you want to get a quick question in, uh, that would be great. The other two, we're going to be posting now a link um, to donate to the Arts Council of Princeton. You know, like so many uh, nonprofits around the country, uh, this economic uh, downturn and pandemic has been very difficult for every nonprofit, including the Arts Council of Princeton. Um, you know, the Arts Council serves tens of thousands of people through the course of the year and thousands of, of children, many of whom would not have access to a, a, an art program otherwise. So we're gonna be putting a link in the comments um, section, I think right now, and we'll also be sending a link out to people. Um, but we really would appreciate um, people, you know, donating. Any amount is, is great, uh, honestly, any amount is great. $5, $10, $50, you know, any amount is wonderful. Uh, we really appreciate all the help that anybody can give uh, to the Arts Council to support this kind of program and other kind of kinds of programs we have through the entire year. Um, and uh, someone else asked, are we looking at other murals? You know, the, re the Artists in Residence program, um, uh, which, which I'm supporting along with a number of other people, uh, we're expecting to have a couple more um, uh, murals in the course of uh, the next couple of years in Princeton, looking for locations, et cetera. So that's really exciting. And uh, you'll see there Arts Council of Princeton uh, .org, uh, and you can go and, and donate uh, to really help us have other kinds of programs like this and really support programming uh, at the Arts Council. Um, if anybody else has any questions, uh, we're happy to take. We've got a few more minutes here. Uh, quick question. Who's your favorite artist? Oh, that's a great uh, question. Um, it's really cliche to say, but I have to be honest with you, Picasso, I mean, it changes, but Picasso is my favorite artist right now. And I have to say, uh, when I meditate, I kind of, um, look for him and, you know, I kind of feel like he guides me. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so someone asked me, uh, who was his prom date? Hmm. It must, be, it must be somebody who was your prom date. I'm guessing they're on here. So uh, somebody asked that. Stephanie if you want to answer that, you can. Stephanie Nazario. Oh, okay. So uh, what's the hardest part of, of creating a new painting? Another oh question from our audience. The hardest part of creating a new painting is in the beginning, you, uh, you have that fear of getting the uh the actual proportions uh mm. correct so it's almost like you get a, a bit anxious anxiety kicks in a little bit because you're just so fearful of always being right you know it's like you know it's always there but then once you just push 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 and you break through it all starts making sense but it's kind of like pushing through that first in initiation you know it's, it's the rough draft of the painting that's, that's awesome. Um, someone's directed a question to me. Uh, why are you supporting the Artists in Residence program? Why is it important to you? You know, in a meeting a couple of years ago, um, I learned that we had discontinued the program. And it had been one of the favorite things that I have that we, we had going on at the Arts Council because it brings two artists, working artists, into the, into the building. Um, uh, and it really allows us to fulfill the mission of building community through the arts. And, and this mural is a great example of building community through the arts. And um, so I said, gosh, we, we need to figure out a way to re revive that program. It's so important. And so, um, so we were able to do that, you know, for the next few years. And uh, it's important because I think public art is great. It really enlivens people's spirits and their minds and their, and their ideas. And it really helps them imagine things that they wouldn't have imagined before. Um, and, you know, I think everyone who walks by that mural can't, can't help but be smiling and having a good time and trying to figure out how many leaves there are and how many stars are you know there and you know it just it makes us think differently and um, so I, I think we need more art around I, you know I'm happy that that the program uh, is going to have at least three public pieces of art 
over the course of the next couple of additional years. And because uh, we need more public art in Princeton. I mean, I think that that we don't have nearly enough public art in Princeton. And so again, you know, I really would urge anybody that can any amount uh, to the Arts Council uh, of Princeton would be great in that link that we submitted, or you can just go to the website uh, at arts, artscouncilofprinceton.org uh, and donate. Any amount is, is, is really appreciated to help our programs. Um, Marlon, um, anything uh, else you wanna, you, wanna, you wanna comment on about uh, advice you'd give to, to artists out there that are, that are budding artists? We've gotten a couple of questions about that uh, before we wrap up. Um, the advice that I would give uh, up and coming artists is uh, don't give up. Uh, search from within, um, meditate, because meditation has helped me a lot to find my path and not be afraid to be who I am as an mm -hmm. artist is key. So I think that if you hold on to that and you stay true to yourself, things will start developing. Things will start growing. And, you know, I am, you know, I honestly, I feel that we need more artists I feel that we need more art. Mm -hmm. So um, I would love to, you know, have a community of art friends. I don't have that many artists that are friends, you know, just very few. But I encourage everyone to, you know, to reach out. And, you know, I don't fight. <laughs> I actually, you know, I love to help. And, you know, just, you know, continue on that journey and, you know, make connections and things will you know come to be um believe in yourself great advice for any any uh any work that anybody does and any craft that anyone does so marlon thank you so much for what you've given back to the community and to the arts council we so appreciate it um jim any final comments i just want to thank you oh thank you so 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 much for um uh getting involved in you know supporting us, the artists, it means the world to me. And I, I'm sure it means the world uh, to other pe uh, artists that are involved. Um, and I thank you. I thank you uh, for your love thank and you. your donations and your passion for the arts. And, you know, um, I, I'm very grateful of this opportunity. And I, I just can't thank you enough. Well, you're welcome. And thanks for everything. I really appreciate it very much. Jim? All right, I am not going to try to top Marlon's final words there. So I'm just going to thank um, you, Tim, for having the inspiration to do this. Marlon, for agreeing to participate and for sharing your story. It was fantastic. Arts um, Council. I, I also want to thank the Arts Council, Maria Evans, um, uh, Stephanie, uh, who else? Uh, Veronica. Uh, thank you so, so much. Um, and then Chris Ramirez, uh, he's a college student that helped me from time to time uh, to create the, the mural. I'm just so thankful and grateful for all this wonderful um, things that have been happening. And, and yes, let's keep this going. Awesome, great. Well, thank you all again for, for uh, dialing in to the webinar. And don't forget artscouncilofprinceton.org, donations accepted any size. Thanks, oh, Jim. Oh, uh, Marlon? One more thing. Back to Marlon. One more thing, guys. Um, so I'll be reaching out to the, uh, the winners. Great. Wonderful. And mailing them, signing them, and um, getting and them away. And everyone who donates any amount, doesn't matter, between uh, now and uh, tomorrow at noon, we're going to enter your name into a little, a little basket and pull out two. So two of the prints will go to people that donate between now and noon time tomorrow, and one print will go to someone who asked a question or commented in some other way so that everyone's got a chance to win a, one of these beautiful uh, 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 prints. So thanks very much. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Stay Thank safe. You. Thank you, guys.